Hey everybody, it's Gretchen. I'm the Science Education Manager for Children's Museum Houston and for Fort Bend Children's Discovery Center out in Sugarland, Texas. So I wanna send a great big thank you to the Fort Bend Children's Discovery Center Kids Committee for coming up with this really fun idea for an educator moment video. Today, we're gonna to learn how to make homemade puzzles. Isn't that cool? Um, so I did a little research and I wanna know um, a little bit more about the history of puzzles. And I found out that the very first jigsaw puzzle ever created was created by a map maker named John Spilsbury in 1767. That's a really long time ago. And the purpose of that jigsaw puzzle was to help um, the user learn a little bit more about geography. And so the first jigsaw puzzles um, being made by map makers, of course, were um, made from maps that were glued to wood and then cut out into really little pieces. And then by attaching and recombining the pieces to make the full picture, you could get a better sense of geography um, of the, the region that the map covered. So this idea took off like wildfire. And as you well know, puzzles are still really popular today. Um, and they're used to kind of put together, you know, famous paintings and picturesque landscapes and um, diagrams and things like that. So I want to show you um, a couple of different ways that you can use puzzles to create some sort of educational study tool for yourself and then walk you through the steps of making one just for fun. So um, whether you're interested in science or mathematics or art or uh, anything under the sun, you can um, choose an image that will help you learn something more about that topic. So for example, if you are interested in chemistry and learning a little bit more about the elements, figuring out where they go on the periodic table, you can create a jigsaw puzzle from the periodic table. Um, that could be the concept um, that your puzzle focuses on. If you're interested in biology um, or um, anatomy, for example, you can create a puzzle to help you learn the bones of the skull, okay? So in either of these examples uh, where you print out images that you find online, you wanna make sure that you print out two of the same image so that when you're putting the puzzle together, you can keep one as a guide, okay? This is like using the front of the puzzle box um, to help you along the way while you're putting the puzzle together. Okay, so after you print out two images, you'll take one of the images and you wanna glue it to a piece of cardboard, okay? You wanna make sure that when you're gluing it that you use a brush or some sort of um, tool to kind of help you smear the glue over every little piece of the paper, okay? You don't want any pieces, any part of the paper um, image not covered by glue because once you cut out your pieces, you don't want any of the ends to kind of come up from the cardboard to separate from the cardboard. Okay, so after you do that, you've got it glued on the back. You can use a ruler and a pencil and a Sharpie and you can map out your puzzle pieces. So most jigsaw puzzles, if you've done a lot of them, you'll probably be familiar with the, the kind of typical shape of them. Um, they've got lots of round edges, um, a few corners, but pieces that would be really, really hard to cut out with a pair of scissors. And so you can see I've opted for a little bit larger pieces here. And my um, pieces have lines and corners. And so hopefully that'll help me cut them out a little bit more easily with the scissors. After you do that, you cut up your pieces, um, you put them together and voila, you have your homemade puzzle um, that will help you learn about the bones of the skull or the symbols of the period, uh, the symbols of the elements on the periodic table, and where they belong in this beautiful tool. Okay, so if you do not want to just print out an image from the internet, um, then you can create your own image, and that's what I've done with this example. So I made a little puzzle of a snail painting, and um, then I made a little box to put all of the pieces in. And so I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how I did that um, right now. Okay, so my puzzle is going to be six inches by six inches. So I'm tracing a square that size here with my ruler and cutting off the, a little bit of the excess cardboard. Next, I'm gonna make a grid in that six by six inch square using the width of my ruler as a guide. And so this is gonna help me to make sure that my puzzle pieces 
are somewhat similar in size. There's your grid. Okay, and now I am going to add and remove lines within the grid to map out the shape of each puzzle piece. So I'll erase the lines that I don't want, add extra lines where I do, and then when I'm finished with that, I will trace the, fi the finished product with a Sharpie. And then again, remove any stray marks with a pencil. Looks like this. It's time to trim down the puzzle to its six by six inch square. Okay, flip it over and on the side without the puzzle pieces, this is where you can create your image. So I'm just using craft paints and a sponge and creating a picture painting of a snail. This is what the back side looks like. My puzzle crinkled a little bit as the paint dried, so I set it down on a paper towel and I just used an iron to flatten it, and then I cut up the pieces. And you've got a puzzle. I think the box for the puzzle, I cut out the shape that you see here in the cardboard. I took a photo and printed out a picture of my painting. And the next step, I just attach the corners of the box with scotch tape and tape the small printed photo of the puzzle on the top. And there you go, you're ready to begin putting your puzzle together. I hope that you try this at home and I hope that you send us pictures of the puzzle that you make. We'd love to see those. Uh, and we will see you next time. Bye guys.